Have you oogled over model homes and longed to have a kitchen with clear counters and nothing but a delicious bowl of lovely fruit sitting on the counter? Me too! And I never thought it'd be possible. But I've learned how to maintain these clutter-free counters and I'd love to share with you how I do it. First, we have to make room in our kitchen cupboards. Most of us have cupboards that are full of all kinds of things, usually gadgets, but most often they're gadgets that we don't actually use. So we've kind of pushed them into the very back so they're kind of out of the way and they're there just in case we need them. And then the items that we do use sit out on the counter. After I decluttered a few rounds, because yes, I had that much stuff, I realized that I wanted to embrace a more minimalist style home. And at that point, I had to be honest with myself on whether or not all these useful things were really useful to me. Sure, these things might be useful, but I wasn't actually using them. So they weren't useful to me in particular, and actually they were hogging all the space in my cupboards. So this meant that I had to evaluate, and what I ended up getting rid of, the crock pot, because I don't actually like crock pot meals. To me, it feels like everything in the crock pot becomes all just mushy, the same texture, and and I want different things when I eat. I want crunch and I want fresh crisp vegetables and I, I have all these different things that I want and the crock pot meets none of them. So I never used it. I hated cleaning it. And it doesn't matter if everybody considers it the mother's best friend. I didn't like eating any foods from it. It was just taking up space. And the bread maker. Sure, it saved time. If I like made homemade bread every single day, I do make bread really frequently. I make bread a couple times a week, but I have a big family. I need more than just a little bread maker would make and I would just use my mixer. So the bread maker was not saving me any time, but it was taking up a considerable amount of space in the cupboards and the food dehydrator. There was a time in my life where I used the food dehydrator regularly, like several times a week. I was soaking nuts and dehydrating them. I was, I was making like zucchini chips and kale chips and things like that. And that's when we were following the GAPS diet to heal our gut. And after completing that and doing a couple other cleanses, we eat fairly normal again. Still not standard American, uh, we tend to eat real food, but I hadn't used that dehydrator in such a long time and it was taking up so much space that I had moved it into the basement. And I thought, why am I storing this in the basement just in case when there's someone out there that can use it that would absolutely love getting it? I know I saved up money to purchase that because, because it was an investment and I could help somebody instead of just having it sit in the basement. And the cake plate. I love... I love fancy things. I love beautiful, intricate china. Like, I love all of that. I love tea stuff, the delicate things. And, and I do bake cakes. And I bake fancy cakes from time to time. But that cake plate was taking up so much space in the cupboard. And I'd use it maybe once a year. So I decided I can put my cake on just a plain white plate and nobody nobody notices because there's paying so much attention to the actual cake. Then I don't have to take up cupboard space with that huge cake plate anymore. The punch bowl. Now, like if you're younger, you probably didn't have a punch bowl, but back when I was getting married, people still had punch bowls. I don't know. It was a thing. And I fancied myself having lots of parties and using it all the time. Turns out I really am not a fan of parties with punch bowls. I would rather have a casual gathering with a handful of friends or dinner. Um, I don't really want to have whatever parties that constitute using a punch bowl. So I took that to our church and left it there. The popcorn popper. Did you know that it's really quite easy to just make popcorn in a pot with a lid? And it tastes good. 
I use coconut oil, I shake the pot a bit, and then I put the pot in the dishwasher and like, it's really easy to clean up. No need to store that big bulky appliance. And the cookbooks, oh my goodness, I loved the cookbooks. When I first got married in the 90s, we needed cookbooks. We didn't have the internet back then. And these days, if we have cookbooks, it's just because we love like that particular person or that particular style of food, and they're tried and tested. But most of us, most of us go online, we look at all recipes, we read the reviews, we go to Pinterest, we look at pictures, and those cookbooks sit in our cupboard taking up so much space. I still like cookbooks and you'll often see me go to the library and pick up cookbooks and read through them and try recipes and then I take them back to the library and the library can be the storage facility for all of my cookbooks. <laughs> I do have one. I have a recipe binder and, the, and it has all the recipes that I've collected in the last 30 years. And then the microwave. I banished the microwave to the basement. I tested it. I wanted to see how I could do living without it because it takes up so much space on the counters. And the only time that I missed a microwave was when I wanted to heat up a heating pad. And now maybe once or twice a month, I take my heat pad down to the basement and microwave it for a couple of minutes. And that's all I needed it for. It was worth it enough to have it in the basement but I don't cook with a microwave. I don't use it for reheating foods. And I prefer the taste of food reheated in a pot versus the microwave anyway. Now, your list may look completely different than mine. But if you empty your kitchen cabinets, if you take everything out of all the cupboards, and then only put back the things that you use and you love, the ones that really help you, and you get rid of everything that's left, you'll find that a lot of the space had been taken up by things that you just weren't using. Then you have to give everything a space of its own, a home of its own. So after you've decluttered, you've taken everything out of your cupboards, put back only the things you love, and gotten rid of everything else, you'll find that you can easily put away the things that normally sit out on the counters. It might seem weird at first to put things away, like the toaster. People say, oh, don't you think that's a bit excessive to put the toaster in the cupboard? Like we use it every day. Well, how long does it actually take to get out of the cupboard and put away again? It's, it's seconds. It is seconds to open the cupboard, pull it out, set it down, plug it in. Seconds. And you can find a tray to put the toaster on so you don't have to deal with the crumbs in between, like moving it. It makes it very easy. And when you're not using it, it's so easy to clean the counters off. You're not having to wipe around anything. You're not having to pick anything up and wipe underneath of it. All of it's put away. Now, some people use a toaster much more often than that. And if you're fine, you to use it like pretty much every meal. I understand not wanting to take it out and put it away. If, and if, you know, five different people are using it every single day, then that's a lot of use. And you get to make that decision. For our family, we would have toast maybe once a week, or we'd go in phases where I'd get bagels and we'd have bagels a few mornings in a row, and then we wouldn't have bagels for a couple of weeks. So to have that not sitting on the counter, felt very good. As you're putting things away, it's helpful to think of your kitchen as zones. This is the drink zone, where all the drink things go, the, the tea, the coffee, the, the teapot, the water filter, the glasses, all of those type of things go in a general area. I have my baking zone, my prepping zone, my cooking zone. And then you can group all of the items that you use in that zone in that area. So if I'm baking, I want all my baking supplies to be within an arm's reach. I want to be able to grab my wooden spoon, my mixing bowls, and my, and my baking powder and baking soda. I want my kitchen to work for me and how I use it. And then put things away when you're done using them. I know it seems obvious to say, well, put things away when you're done, but I was not in the habit of that. I was not in the habit of picking up after myself. I would get out the coffee beans to make coffee and I'd leave the coffee beans sitting on the counter. I would drink my coffee and leave my empty cup on the end table. I would use the scissors to open a package and I'd leave them sitting right there next to the empty package that I wasn't throwing away either. The spices would get left out sitting by the stove where I'd been using them. 
for some reason, in my mind, it felt like I was saving myself time by not taking care of those things. But the truth is, it takes more time to pick up after yourself. To You have to take time out of your day to go put things away all over the house. But doing it that way takes up way more time because then I'd have to set aside time to tidy up, to pick up after myself. If we pick up as we go, we never have to play catch up and clean up. The counters are maintained as empty because we've just, we put things away. And have a daily reset time. I resisted all forms of chores for years. No one wants to spend their days doing chores, right? Certainly not me. But when you have a reset time in place, just like how you brush your teeth every night before you go to bed, the kitchen gets tidied automatically. Because we don't consider how much time it's going to take us to brush our teeth. We don't think, oh, well, now I have to set aside two full minutes to brush my teeth. That's going to take a lot of time out of my day. We don't think about that. We just go brush our teeth and then go to bed. So if we set a reset time where we're tidying up the kitchen, we don't consider how much time it's going to take. We don't set aside time to get it done. The kitchen instead just gets tidied with very little thought. It's the thought of doing the work that is more exhausting than the actual work. So when you have a routine built into your day, follows the pattern of your day and it just fits right in, you don't have to think about doing it. It just, it just gets done. And suddenly you look around your room and you're like, oh, wow, look, the kitchen's clean. There's nothing left for me to do. I already did it. My resets are quick kitchen tidy, do the dishes, wipe off the counters and stove. That's all I have to focus on morning and evening. And then on Saturdays, our whole family chips in and does a weekly reset. This is just all the main areas of the home, the sweeping, mopping, vacuuming, dusting, cleaning the bathroom. It's really just the basics. And remember that imperfection is okay. Doing these four things that we've already talked about is gonna clear up so much counter space getting rid of the excess, creating homes for things, put things away as you go, and establishing a daily home reset. All those things means that your counters can stay clutter-free. But I have to tell you that my home is not perfect. I try to focus on keeping one counter clear, one main counter. That's my workstation. That's where things get done. But we have a big family, so there's things that get left out. On our drink station counter, remember the drink zone? Glasses get left out and it's okay. They drink on them all day long. They stay on that counter. I wash them at night and then we use them again the next day. Things get left on other counters. Sometimes I don't get the dishes done. With this idea of perfection, we hold ourselves to such a high standard. It's something that we can never actually attain because life never works perfectly. It never works that I'm going to get all of my tasks done every single day when I want them done. Or that my children are going to remember to not set things on the counter or put things away or pick up after themselves. Even me, I don't always pick up after myself. Sometimes I fall back into that old habit of leaving things, leaving things out where I was using them. But we're not striving for perfect. We're striving for easy. We're striving for useful. And we're striving for a house that we actually enjoy being in. So for me, I made it my focus to keep one counter clear. When I walk into the kitchen, that's the counter that I see. That's what most people see when they walk in is that one counter. And if it looks clear, the rest of the kitchen feels, it feels nicer. It feels cleaner. It doesn't feel like a mess. I also know that if I tried to keep every single area of my house, every single surface area of my house clear 100% of the time, that's all I would ever do. And that's not how I want to live my life. I want to enjoy my life. I do want one clear counter so it's ready for me to use when I need it and it's nice to look at. It's like a space that my eyes can rest when I walk into the kitchen, but I simply don't have the energy to stress about all of the counters all of the time. Remember that any step forward is still a step forward. It doesn't have to be done perfectly. None of us have the ability to have a perfect home. 
if you need motivation to establish a daily reset routine. I created a five-day mini course to get you started. The Kitchen Reset is one of my favorite courses. The information included brings clarity and helps spur you on to take action, the action that you want to take in your home. So what are we going to cover? Day one, exactly what to do in the morning and evening, how to handle it if you already have piles of dishes all over the place, and letting go of that perfectionism so you can accomplish what you want. Day two, what to do when you don't have time to accomplish all of this. How discipline equals freedom so that you can enjoy free time. Day three, how to handle people living with us and the expectations that we have on how they participate with this housekeeping thing. Really just for ourselves so we can be a happier person. Day number four, changing habits and proving to ourselves how capable we are because you are capable. And day five, what to do from this point on, the basics of decluttering and what questions to ask so that you can effectively simplify your space. To find out more about the five day reset challenge, I'll put the link in the video description below. And if you want to see what it looked like for me to have the reset in place for 31 straight days, you can check out this video right here.